Hi there, I'm Michelle Duval, the director of the Mindful Center. I really love to share this next teaching because it can really simplify a process that gets really, really complicated for people when we're just stuck in our own heads. Have you ever noticed that you're like sitting in your car at a red light and you're thinking about stuff? And typically you're not necessarily thinking about all the good stuff that happened to you throughout the course of the day. Very rarely do we sit at a red light in our cars and be thinking about, gosh, our plumbing totally worked at our house this morning. That was awesome. My car started up on the very first try. No. If you bring some awareness to what your mind is doing in those kind of moments of kind of semi or half engagement, you'll start to see very clearly that the mind has a very strong tendency to focus on all of the stuff that didn't quite go so well throughout the course of the day or whatever it is. And there's a very specific reason that this happens. So it has to do with the hardwiring of our brains. I love to share with students that though the brains are beautifully designed for our survival, they're not as beautifully designed for our happiness. So the brain's number one job is to help you to survive. So in those moments of just kind of hanging out, waiting for the red light to turn to green, or for me, it's always when I'm at home cooking and I'm kind of stirring the pasta. I don't have to be super engaged in that activity. So anytime we're not super engaged in an activity, the brain will slip into what we call the default mode of brain function. It's the brain's natural tendency to flip through the Rolodex of either past experiences or potential future ones. And all it's really interested in doing is finding where's the problem, where's the problem, where's the problem. Why does it do this? Because it ain't the good stuff that could potentially negatively impact our ability to survive. It's the bad stuff. So if the brain can help us to focus on some of those negative stuff, some of the problems, it can be kind of working in the background to solve those problems to potentially help us to better to survive. But then we go back to my statement, the brain is beautifully designed for our survival, not as beautifully designed for our happiness. If we just let it kind of do its thing, it will slowly begin to erode the quality of our lives as it keeps kind of trying to encourage us or even force us sometimes to focus on all the things that aren't quite right in our lives. Now, why mindfulness and why meditation can be so effective to pop us out of these default mode of, modes of brain function is because when we do a little mindfulness practice, even sitting in our car at a red light, we can totally move into a practice right then, it gives our minds something to engage in, right? So I'm sitting in my car at a red light, I can begin to engage or become present for the feeling of my breath, right? Really moving my mind into that feeling of breath, or I'm uh, cooking the pasta, I can move into the feeling of the spoon in my hand, the weight of my body in the, on the floor, the feeling or the sense of being uh, alive and in my family life. Giving my mind something in that present moment experience to engage in will tend to have a softening or a quieting effect on that default mode of brain function. Basically moving ourselves out of that endless rehashing of the past and rehearsing for the future, endlessly seeking where's the problem, where's the problem, where's the problem. So beautiful practice that I often recommend is when you see yourself moving into those default modes of brain function. In fact, even to have the language around that can be really help around that can be really helpful. You can even say to yourself, "Oh, look, I'm defaulting, right?" And then give your mind something else to focus on, the feeling of the breath, the weight of the body in your seat if you're sitting at your car, uh, just being in your body, the sensations in your body, the feeling of the feet on the ground, whatever it is. And just watch as it tends to have that quieting effect or softening effect on that default mode of brain function. This is just one of the many incredible ways that mindfulness meditation can work with some of the natural tendency of brain function and also the natural tendencies of the mind to begin to move ourselves into more and more beneficial states more and more times throughout the course of any given day. Okay, I hope that's helpful to you. See you next time.